Howdy, howdy, howdy. So now we're going to work on Revolve. I've already gone ahead and made my part studio inside my folder. Um, I've turned off the front and top planes. Uh, we're going to be working a little vertical this time. We're going to be starting on the right plane. And I'm going to make a sketch. I'm going to make it on the right plane, hit our view cube so we see the right. And that's our step one. Um, for Revolve, we are making uh, some sort of like wheel or pulley is uh, what I would say. Uh, and um, we got a sketch, let's get to drawing. So uh, we're gonna create uh, two uh, lines um, and uh, they're gonna be construction lines. So L and then Q. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make one long line. So I, I kind of referenced my origin, I got that orange dot made a point over here. Now I'm gonna make one long line going across. And then I'm also going to make a construction line. I just hit escape and then LQ again. And we're gonna make one vertical reference line. We're gonna be using these uh, for, one for mirroring probably, the other for actual revolve, which we'll do in a little bit. But first we actually gotta draw some stuff. So uh, grabbing my line tool again, and now we're gonna draw essentially uh, a half of uh, the profile of the pulley that we're making. So uh, it just tells us to kind of draw this like half shape. Um, looks almost like a uh, castle from, uh, if you ever played chess. Um, so we got that. And that's our step two. And so this is gonna be our mirror line. This is gonna be our center axis for when we flip everything around and revolve and make our 3D part. So um, because this is our mirror line, uh, we can click on the mirror tool. So again, these little L's and our reflected L and we wanna select our mirror line. That's this vertical construction line. And now we can go ahead and select all of these lines. Now we have these selected. They should give you a solidly um, shaded part. And uh, you can go ahead and hit escape because we don't need to mirror anything anymore. And that's part three. Part four is starting to dimension things. So if you're very zoomed in right now, if you're like this, I highly recommend zooming out for this next step because we're going to have to make some dimensions farther down here. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to dimension some of our horizontal stuff and then we're going to have to dimension vertically in a moment using our um, center axis as a reference point. So let's start with the horizontal dimensions. Um, and if I hit D, I got my dimension tool. I'm going to make a dimension between this point and this point. And that's going to be 40. And now I got to hop up there, hit the top. We're gonna make another dimension between this point and this point. And according to the tutorial, it's gonna be 75. Finally, we need to make a dimension between this point and this point. And if I zoom out a little bit, this needs to be 100. So we're getting there. Now we need to start working vertically. Uh, and it's, it's a little weird. Um, you would think we would dimension from here to here. We're not actually gonna do that. Because this is gonna be like a wheel or a pulley shape that we're revolving in a moment, uh, we're actually going to create some diameters using again our center axis as a reference point. So our first uh, reference, just to make it easier for you to see, is going to be uh, this point here. And I'm gonna make a dimension from this point to this line. Now. I don't wanna use this dimension because this is just the distance between those two lines. What I actually wanna do is again, make the diameter dimension, which is more real to what we're gonna see in a moment once it's in 3D. Um, and that the way to do that is to just move your cursor past the construction line. And then you'll get that little um, diameter symbol in front of the, the zero with, or the hole with the line slash through it. That's the diameter symbol. Um, you want this, so you hold your cursor down here and click. And this is gonna be 25. Now, we're gonna do the same thing, except uh, now we gotta like actually, um, whoa, what did I just hit? Oh, it looks like I zoomed out a little bit. 
there we go. Um, what we're actually gonna do now is we are going to uh, make a uh, diameter between this line and our construction line. Bring that down so it's another diameter. And this is gonna be 75. So hopefully you kind of get the, the idea at this point. Um, work your way up just so that things don't break too much. You might actually need to make this a little bit bigger too. So let's go here and just make this one 250. Give yourself some breathing room. This here to here, that's gonna be 200. And this here to here is gonna be 165. So just to kind of organize a little bit and get stuff so it makes a little sense, we'll bring these out. And you end up with something looking like this. So that's step four. We're adding some dimensions. It's just a little tricky because you have to bring the dimension past the construction line in order to get these diameter dimensions. And you're done. You can move on to step five, which is actually revolving this thing. So revolve is the tool next to extrude. We can click on revolve. And the face that we want to extrude is this shaded face. Our revolve axis is this line. Now, what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to hop into isometric view because it'll look cooler now. Um, I can click on this revolve axis and boom, we have some sort of pulley or wheel, some, some sort of 3D part. I can hit the check and I can turn off my right plane and you have your revolve part. Now, um, you probably want to rename it according to the uh, actual tutorial. They say, hey, this is a wheel. Um, and then the material that they assign it is actually stainless steel. So um, we're still using the Onshape library. Stainless steel 304 is what they say. So that's the density properties that you want for when you measure mass in a moment. Next step is just to select the thing. So click wheel, click your part, and then hop on down here and actually display your mass properties. And that's how you're going to do your self-check. So once you have that... Um, once you've assigned the properties, you're good to go. Revolve is great for uh, many different things we do in the future. Many uh, of your projects may have um, pulleys or wheels, that sort of thing. Um, you may also just need to make some, some sort of part that uses a profile just spun around, um, and it's great for that. So um, next thing we're going to work on is sweep. We're going to be making a paper clip. Um, let me know if you have any questions or you run into issues. Happy to help, uh, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.